Thank you, President Tsitsi Kostas, um, honorable members. Um, thank you for inviting me. And um, I have to say, indeed, it's always a pleasure to be back to the uh, court, uh, Committee of the Regions and to uh, former colleagues. And uh, indeed, uh, I will never miss uh, the time as a regional councillor, but also as a commissioner for regional and urban policy. And therefore, indeed, it's, it's close to my heart, everything which concerns regions and uh, municipalities and uh, everything which is related to, uh, to it. And therefore, it's um, also an excellent opportunity for me now to discuss uh, with you our proposal for the upcoming financial framework and in particular the recovery plan for Europe. And uh, I also take note uh, and I, I very much appreciate your strong support. And I, I, I also welcome your invitation to join you on the 14th of uh, July uh, in order to show uh, determination and to, to make the necessary, uh, to put the necessary pressure on the national leaders indeed to find an agreement uh, at the next uh, European um, Council. Uh, time is of essence uh, in general, but in the particular situation we are in, uh, in uh, especially, and therefore thanks a lot for all your support. It's indeed an unprecedented situation. None of us has ever faced it, which has hit our economies and has uh, taken thousands of uh, lives in Europe only. Uh, so we have to work hand in hand on, as you rightly said, a local, regional, national, but also European level to support citizens, enterprises, regions, and municipalities, even the little villages, as much as we can. I fully appreciate that um, speaking here today, I'm dealing um, directly with the asymmetrics uh, uh, this crisis has brought. Thankfully, some of you will have not been impacted as badly as some of the unspeakable suffering in the worst affected areas. Similarly, some of your regions will have a faster path to recovery than others. One of my main objectives uh, today is to mobilize your particular insight at exactly the regional level to optimize the way we implement our recovery plan. So I will start by setting out how we intend to support the recovery. In addition to the already existing crisis support, you know, these are several elements uh, amounting to 540 million and very important, the relaxation of, uh, in particular, structural fund um, regulations in order uh, to provide a quick disbursement this year and already at the beginning of next year, the Commission proposed the emergency instrument Next Generation EU and uh, also the reinforced multi-annual financial framework. The emergency next generation EU of altogether 750 billion euro will boost the financial firepower of the European budget. The funds will be raised through borrowing on the markets and will be then channeled through EU programs to underpin the immediate and fast acting measures needed to protect people and get the economy back on its feet. So I need your help here, and uh, again, thank you for your initiative on the 14th, but also the many, many individual uh, actions um, all the colleagues will take in the next couple of weeks uh, to, to, to make the necessary pressure on the national leaders. Because Next Generation EU can only start operating once we have an agreement and uh, the amended own resources decision has been nationally ratified. So this is another aspect. And I know many of you are also members of the respective uh, national parliaments. So we need, I can only start borrowing even one, one euro if I have um, the um, legally necessary um, approval by all our member states. And in 23 of our member states, at least 23, we need the ratification by the 
national parliaments. So therefore, please uh, pay particular attention to have this done as quick as possible. Uh, and this means in the, ideally in the fourth quarter of this year. Um, a reinforced core MFF for 2021 till 2027, amounting to 1,100 billion euro. Uh, uh, this is sort of say, the core budget. It will help us give a helping hand uh, to the regions in need to promote symmetric recovery and convergence across the union to support the single market, step up cooperation in areas such as health and crisis management, and equip the union with a long-term budget to drive the green and digital transitions and build a fairer and more resilient economy. The funds raised on the market and the reinforced long-term budget will direct, will direct money to where the needs are along three pillars. The first pillar is about recover, repair, and emerge uh, so in order to return stronger out from the crisis. The centerpiece to support member states will be the new recovery and resilience facility. If I take together uh, grants and loans, it should amount to around 560 billion euro. This instrument will foster investments and reforms essential to a lasting recovery and in particular, very important, improve the resilience. Cohesion policy will play its essential role in supporting a balanced recovery through a new 55 billion uh, euro uh, so-called REACT EU initiative. Hopefully the first 5 billion euro funds under this instrument uh, should become uh, already available this year. Member states will be able to use the funds in a flexible way, making sure the flow to the regions that need is, uh, it, uh, uh, is guaranteed in order uh, to be quick and uh, very helpful. REACT-EU provides additional cohesion funding, taking into account the impact of the crisis on economic growth, unemployment and relative uh, prosperity. prosperity. Each member state can direct this uh, to the regions and sectors most impacted by the crisis. This money is on top of the cohesion allocations for the next seven years and complements long-term cohesion investments. Under the Just Transition Fund, 40 billion euro should go to the regions most affected by the transition. Overall additional cohesion funding reaches some 100 billion euro considering also the, the up uh, to 10 billion euro midterm adjustment of the 2021-2027 cohesion policy allocation, as soon as regional socioeconomic data is available. The pillar two is about the kickstarting uh, of the economy and of uh, about more uh, what we call strategic autonomy. With our new solvency support instrument, which finally should be uh, more than 30 billion euro, we will provide urgent support to the capital of uh, uh, sound companies, uh, but at, uh, for, for those companies which are again sound, which have performed well before the crisis, but are now at risk due to the crisis. Just uh, like with React EU, Part of the funds should become available already this year before the ratification of the own resources decision. Here again, a strong push uh, to member states is necessary because I sense there is some reluctance uh, to, to offer this already this year. But uh, our first reaction was to provide liquidity. But second, in particular towards the end of the year, many companies unfortunately will, uh, as a result of the liquidity crunch, face a solvency crunch and a crunch. And this has to be addressed probably uh, and um, already this year. That's why we need a decision and not only a decision, but also the opportunity to provide already support this year. Uh, beyond what I have just said, we make our economy 
uh, weatherproof by strengthening the European single market. The new strategic investment facility uh, for around uh, 50 billion euro will enhance EU's autonomy, strategic autonomy. We have uh, painfully witnessed in the last uh, month that we are heavily depending, for instance, uh, uh, in the pharmaceutical sector on the delivery, on the supply of, of, of medicine from outside Europe. This is something we have to correct, we have to change, and exactly for this purpose, we will offer within the InvestEU architecture a so-called fifth window uh, to, in particular, finance uh, what we call nowadays uh, our strategic autonomy. So finally, the third pillar, it's about learning for the future. Europe's key to success is to draw lessons from each crisis, as we did it before uh, for the banking sector. I'm always referring to it uh, because just after the uh, financial crisis 2008, 2009, we started uh, to reform the banking sector. May I say we forced them to capitalize better and uh, this has created more resilience. The representatives of the banking sector were not always happy about all the measures, but today they are, because today the banking sector is uh, not an additional risk, an additional burden, quite the opposite. It can indeed uh, serve um, as an asset in, in this crisis. And it shows that if you are taking measures in due time, you can indeed uh, uh, create the necessary resilience. And what was uh, possible, achievable in one particular sector, the banking sector can and should now uh, reduplicate it uh, in different areas. And um, therefore, we should use the current uh, challenge as an opportunity, uh, again, to build resilience. And this includes uh, three dimensions. The first is uh, building up the capacities to respond to the crisis in a more coordinated, effective, efficient, quick, and therefore European way. Therefore, the Commission is proposing a new ambitious EU for Health program for more than 9 billion euro, as well as a reinforced civil protection mechanism um, around 2 billion euro. Second, we will strengthen Horizon Europe by another 13.5 billion euro to reinforce vital research in health, resilience, and the green and digital transition. But it's also about investing in uh, artificial intelligence, quantum computing. Here, uh, in the next uh, decade, uh, decisions for the rest of the century, if you like, will be taken. And it depends if uh, Europe is a first mover or a first or second follower. So this is also something which can be captured under the title, under the headline, uh, strategic autonomy. And finally, uh, one of the lessons we have learned is um, uh, that we have to stand more than ever to our values by demonstrating solidarity with our global partners to fight the pandemic, to work together for a sustainable development and to reflect growing humanitarian needs in the most vulnerable parts of the world. And uh, as the pandemic is, uh, by definition, something which affects the whole world, uh, uh, we have to provide, for instance, if available, vaccines all around the globe in order also to safeguard ourselves and to help us uh, to return uh, to the so-called new normality and at least to have opportunities again uh, to travel around the globe and uh, to meet friends and uh, to make businesses. So, but um, a very, of course, uh, relevant question is how will the money uh, for the recovery be raised and uh, be repaid? To make borrowing possible, the Commission will use the headroom, which is the difference between the own resources ceiling of the long term budget on the one hand and the MFF payment. Uh, ceiling on the other. So uh, it's not difficult to list the options for mobilizing extra money. Either we ask the member states to contribute more 
or we generate new own resources. Uh, and of course, we will propose additional new own resources. Many member states, actually everybody is uh, in a very uh, dire uh, fiscal situation and therefore an additional burden is not uh, um, expectable and it's also not necessary uh, uh, because uh, these own, new own resources should um, serve to finance the borrowing of today at uh, a later stage. Um, uh, and of course, it will also in the future help to reduce the pressure on national budgets. We have, uh, when we presented the revised um, uh, MFF proposal plus the next generation EU, uh, presented some options. One is the extension of the emission trading system. Another one is a carbon border adjustment mechanism, a single market entrance fee based on operations of large enterprises. Um, I think something which is very justified because if you can operate in all the 27 member states on the same uh, rule books, on the same legislative basis, without borders in a huge majority of countries, and they're becoming more and more with the same um, um, currency, uh, this is an advantage. And um, um, if you are not uh, um, exporting or if you only export in one or two markets, you are not benefiting that much than a company which is uh, benefiting from this single European market. So uh, a small um, uh, fee is something which is justified. And the same um, applies for digital tax. In the current crisis, huge international internet companies have made even additional profit. And the small little shop owner across the corner uh, who had to, to lock down his shop uh, facing a serious uh, economic and personal crisis, and usually, by the way, paying more tax than um, internet uh, uh, companies, uh, I think here again, it's an act of fairness if, uh, if we introduce something which to a certain extent compensates a little bit uh, the burden um, uh, little shop owners, company owners are facing. So taking everything together, these new own resources could more than fully finance the repayment of and the interest on the market um, uh, finance uh, raised under the European recovery instrument. This would mean no extra burden for individual taxpayers. A very important message. All what we are aiming at is not um, uh, uh, leading to additional burden to the individual European taxpayers. Uh, there will be, of course, and this is, I think, for good reasons, also um, demanded by some member states and accepted uh, uh, by everybody a clear link to the disbursements of this additional funding with the follow-up of the European semester recommendations. Improved resilience critically depends on more work on our competitiveness. Uh, what could be your role? Uh, first, it's about the timing. We have no time to lose to be operational on the 1st of January 2021. That's once again, I'm grateful for your initiatives uh, before the European Council. But again, as I already said, it's important uh, uh, further down the road uh, not uh, to lose um, engagement in order to, to guarantee that the necessary uh, decisions where, where necessary are taken at the national level. Uh, the political price, I have to say, if there is no agreement, is higher than the costs of any recovery package, uh, because we would lose altogether credibility. Citizens would not understand why we are not able to take decisions. The market would react negatively, uh, and all this uh, is uh, leading, may I say, to nowhere. One has to be aware, but I know I can rely on you and uh, the understanding of, of, of regions and municipalities 
how important this is. You are the ones who are closest to our citizens. You know what are their expectations, what are their hopes. Apropos hopes, uh, the Commission hopes that uh, member states uh, will therefore uh, understandable and really do everything to reach an agreement uh, at the European Council in July before the summer break in order to enter into negotiations with the European Parliament. We should not forget how important it is uh, uh, to have an agreement with the European Parliament. The European Parliament has its role, has its uh, um, um, uh, expectations, its demands, and therefore, uh, as soon as possible, negotiations are necessary. It's also about uh, the bridge financing, the front loading, I have already mentioned, in order to start uh, disbursements uh, already this year. Uh, the new own resources decision could ideally be in place early next year, enabling uh, the Commission to start pouring on the markets for the next generation EU. So again, again, I have to say I need your help to speed up this process. The more public voices are heard in support of our proposal, the more difficult it will be to delay its adoption. I mean, here really we should orchestrate a very decentralized push to each and everybody in order to achieve the goals. Uh, the most important message uh, to echo is that our proposal as a whole would ensure that every single member state's net balance would improve. What does it mean? The net contribution, and I stress the net contribution of each member state, and here I'm talking about the so-called net payers, will be in 2021 lower than in 2020. And the, the so-called beneficiaries will receive in 2021, and even the, 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 the further years, more than in 2020. And only to give you, so to say, a, a, a flavor why um, uh, this is uh, correct. I just presented last week um, the draft budget for 2021. And in 2021, the core MFF, based on a breakdown of this 1,100 uh, euro, uh, billion euro for seven years, will be 167 billion euro. But next generation EU next year should be 211 billion, because here we are talking about a division by four. So it's obvious that in the next couple of years, um, member states have to pay less compared to this year. Uh, um, and uh, therefore, there should, because they receive more back, they receive more in return. And therefore, it's a contribution to each and, um, member states in terms to fight uh, the consequences of the crisis. And according to our proposal, this will not backfire uh, in, in, in future years, because our idea is to have new own resources, which are European ones, which are dedicated to refinance the borrowing at the market, everything limited to the four years. Of course, the repayment period will be longer, but it will even in the future not affect the individual national budgets. Therefore, I think uh, it's a very convincing uh, proposal we have made. Um, and I have to admit, of course, as you see, the, the, the public debate, um, especially support is needed in the so-called uh, frugal countries, uh, but they are beyond the four uh, ones, um, uh, some other like-minded ones. I think everybody here knows about uh, which countries I am talking. And uh, again, this uh, bottom-up pressure will be very much, uh, uh, will be very important. So with uh, having said all this, again, thank you for this opportunity. I think we all understand uh, uh, this matter of uh, urgency. Uh, we are already compared to the last uh, uh, period, eight months behind uh, 
uh, because uh, the, the current MFF from 2014 till 2020, uh, the council took the decision about the current uh, budget in uh, November 2012. Uh, and um, uh, if you compare it to now, the council should have taken the decision in November last year. Now we are already in July and therefore, but on top also to respond to the crisis, we need now decisions in order to show our ability to act and not only to talk. Thank you very much.